Hello, good morning, or good afternoon, whatever time it is over there. I'm just going to go through my morning routine a little bit. It's not much of a morning routine, but it's kind of my breakfast routine. Uh, first, I grab a cup of water just to flush some things out, get me started, and then I fill my trusty kettle with a little bit of water, enough for one cup of coffee for work, let that go. While that's heating up, I dig out my cereal. Here it is, nothing special. This is calcium fortified. Fortified means strengthened with. With, it has more of whatever it is it's fortified with. So it's calcium fortified, and I've become a bit more conscious of the calcium intake because uh, recently I've gotten a fear of forming bladder stones and I heard that uh, you need to have more calcium in your diet, food-based calcium, so that way um, your bones will start uh, synthesizing or combining or using the calcium that you do intake. That doesn't make much sense, but <laughs> it helps I don't know why. Actually, I don't really know why, but they say eat calcium from food sources, so I at least got this. Um, and remember that cup of water that I filled earlier? That still has some more water. I know it's pretty simple. I live a simple life. I just grab some cereal like this. Exactly, no bowl. Straight as my mouth from the hand, hand to mouth. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm. That's it. Over and over. That way, I have less things to clean, less dishware, eating wear to clean afterwards. Very direct. I can't drink milk with my cereal because I'm lactose tolerant, which means that my stomach acts funny whenever I eat too much lactose. Lactose food. <laughs> Anyways. What I also do take and drink in the morning is this. It's honey, like two or three different kinds of honey. Bioactive honey is inside, honeycomb was inside. Lemons, rooibos tea bag, well there's three of them tea bags. And there's ginger floating around here. This has been sitting like this for a few days. Hopefully it's healthy. I've gotten the impression that it's incredibly healthy. Just scoop some out. Two scoops, three scoops. Try to get a lemon slice in there. Some ginger in there. A honeycomb if you want. I don't really like the honeycomb, but they say it's healthy, and there it is. Some ginger, some honey as well. Once the water's boiled, I just put a little bit inside so that way it's not so hot that I can't drink it right away. As I'm rushing to work, I have to be able to drink this one pretty quickly. So I'll fill half of it maybe, and then fill the rest with cool water after it's mixed a little bit. I'll be right back after I get coffee. You'll hear me grinding a little bit in the background. By the way, this is the coffee I get. Whoa, it's shaking. Whoa. And that's boiling, so I'll turn it off now. Let it cool a little bit. And voila, this is from, yeah, <laughs> the grinder. It smells amazing. Can clean my cup a little bit more. There we go. And then grab a filter from the cupboard, cupboard, cupboard. I call it a cupboard, cupboard. And grab my V60 cone shaped coffee filter the dripper. Right inside, slap it out. And for the beginning pour, 
All you want to do is just top it to the surface of the grind, grinds, so that way the um, gases inside the beans can escape. You may know already this is called the blooming phase. You didn't see it in action, but the grounds rose, grinds, grounds. The grounds, the grinds, the grinds rose a little bit. They bloomed upwards as the gases escaped the um, beans. But anyways, you want to do that so that way when the water, when the hot water is, <laughs> what are the verbs? What verbs do I need? <laughs> so that way the water, as it goes through the beans and starts, um, shit, what is it called? <laughs> Mixing, brewing? So as the water is brewing, you don't want the gases still trapped inside of the beans trying to get out while the water is supposed to be going into the beans or into the grinds, getting the taste out of the beans. So you need to get all that gas out so there's less of that um, <laughs> conflict. I have to practice my English so badly. So that way there's no interference from the gases when it comes to the water brewing and getting the taste Extracting, that's the word. So the water can extract more of the bean in the amount of time that it's there rather than fighting with the gases trying to escape. Second pour, I don't know why they do it, but I saw the world barista, the Japanese world barista guy who came up with the, um, the 30-60, no, the 40-60 the technique. He said that for the second pour, Oh, maybe I have it incorrect. Yeah, I think he said that. Or maybe it was the blue bottle recipe. Maybe the blue bottle recipe told us that we should repeat the first step again so that way the water rises just to the surface of it. And for every pour afterwards, you can just top it off to um, however you want, to whatever level you want. Doing this again, just rambling. Yeah. At this time, I should have had some water inside of my other cup already so that way it could cool off and mix at the same time. I forgot to mention, I also add additional tea, rooibos, organic tea. Rooibos, I heard, is one of the best sources for um, like a poly, poly something, polyphenol, 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 polyphenols. In fact, I may have that. that idea wrong and that word as well and i think i have another one no nope. oh i do here's the other one so i mix it as well with the rose hip and hibiscus hibiscus i also heard is one of the highest sources of polyphenols again it may not be polyphenols that's just the word i have in my head there you go let it dip in there that's finished so i will add some more And to give it kind of um, a balance, that's not the word, to give it a balanced uh, pour, to extract, <laughs> how do you describe this? I'm really struggling with English. Mm. I've heard that you should have the water level the same, the water temperature the same with every pour. And that helps you figure out what um, like what needs to be changed. For one thing, it helps you figure out what needs to be changed in your brewing recipe, in your brewing procedure. So that way you don't have so many different variables that you have to consider. At least if the water temperature is the same every time, you don't have to worry about whether it's a wet, the water temperature that is changing the taste of the coffee at the end of it. So you just want to make everything equal and just change one variable at a time. While that's going down, I'm going to return this and be back. Okay, well, I don't think there's too much more I have to say because this is running a bit long. The rest of this time will be spent just brewing, drinking, and eating my calcium from my hand with a cup of water additionally, which means I need three cups of water every morning, which I don't have because my original third cup broke a while ago there's a big crack. There's a small crack in the bottom here, at the bottom here, and I've just been 
letting all the old coffee collect here that we gather from this uh, dripper here, which means that I place this dripper on top of this cup when this one is topped off so that way it doesn't overflow. And all this blackness here, all these grinds, all this residue, all this dirt, all these leftovers is maybe, are maybe three weeks worth of just like residual coffee drips from the dripper. Anyways, that's it. Bye.